you know, Jesus called the church to be salt and light. And light gives definition to things that are in darkness, and salt is a preservative. The point of salt is not flavoring. We use salt to make things taste better, but in ancient times, salt was a preservative. It kept things that would naturally decay to slow down the decay process. And when Jesus talks about the church and Christians, his disciples, he's talking about us as being salt in the world. So we're, we're meant to be involved in aspects of society to slow the decay down. You can't stop it, but you're going to slow it down and uh, uh, change the effect of it. And part of the reason why we have some of the problems that we have uh, in our society today where we've begun to deviate away from things that were just norms is that, we, that Christians have really abdicated their responsibility of being involved in the political arena. And I'm not talking about like running for president. I mean, it, that's, that's, that's the highest office of the land. But I'm talking about school boards. I'm talking about running for uh, city councils and village uh, you know, boards. I'm talking about uh, being involved as state reps, uh, state senators, judges. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about being involved in serving in the community. Uh, in, in different ways, being uh, volunteers in the school, school districts, teachers, and actually bringing our faith into those arena. Now listen, I'm not talking about proselytizing. I'm not talking about, you know, we're here to turn everybody into a Christian nation or make Kalamazoo a Christian city, although that would not be a bad thing. Um, but I'm talking about Christians being involved in policy making and legislature, because the lie is, is that, well, you can't legislate morality, right? How many have heard that before? You're not supposed to legislate morality. Well, can I just tell you, all legislature is someone's morality. And when we don't bring godly morality into the picture, you're going to get every other kind of morality that does comes and fills that void. And so I, I, I'm an advocate that it's like we, we should not just be voters, but we should actually be in, involved in the process. At the same time, recognizing that there are, you may win and you may lose, but politics and government is not our hope. Our hope is the kingdom of God. There is coming a day when our king that we sang about this morning is going to return and he's not running for office. Psalm 2 says God's already put him on the throne. He's reigning and ruling, and someday he's going to break out of eternity, step back into history to take his destiny, which is to rule the nations of the world. And that's our blessed hope. And we trust that history is in God's hands. But at the same token, we have a responsibility to be involved. So I think in the future, we need to see a lot more people in, in the church, not just this church, but in all I mean, there are thousands of people in Kalamazoo that are Christians that go to church that can be salt to slow some of the effect of some of this craziness that's going on in our society. And if we don't do that, then we really don't have a right to complain about it when it does happen. Uh, and so I, I know that in our church, we have several people that are running uh, for offices and uh, school boards, state rep, judges, and things like that. I, I'm proud of that. I, I, in the future, I hope we have more of that. And uh, it, it's interesting to me that, and I'm just going to say it because it's red hot and I'm not going to moderate it, um, that when churches like Radiant who uh, have people come in and, and have any political opinions or pastors say anything about pol political, they say, you're not supposed to, you know, take their tax exempt status away. But I just want to remind you that two weeks ago, Kamala Harris went to a black church in Atlanta, Georgia, and stood up and quoted scripture, and they fully endorsed her, and not a single major media outlet condemned that as being a separation of church and state. So uh, it's, it, uh, there's never been a church that has lost its tax-exempt status for talking about politics. And the church has always had a voice into politics. And we're either going to be a prophetic voice to politics, or we're going to become a product of politics. And I believe that Jesus has called us to be a prophetic voice to the political arena.